Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Christmas is just four days away, so I wanted to come out and show you guys what the parks are like. And also I got a dining reservation at 50's Primetime Cafe. So I figured we'd ride some rides, eat some food, and have a merry Hollywood Studios kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. Christmas week is definitely one of the busiest weeks at Walt Disney World, so I'm not too sure what we can get accomplished, but I am intrigued to see what the wait times are going to be at some of the attractions, and at least we got a dining reservation at 50's Primetime Cafe. I've been craving a nice chicken pot pie, and I hear they have a really good one. It's been really cold here in Florida the past couple of days. The temperature has been getting as low as the 30s and 40s, and they even issued a falling iguana warning. That's whenever the temperature gets so low, the iguanas stiffen up and they fall out of trees. So I think a nice hot chicken pot pie sounds really good. My birthday was two days ago and I had such an amazing time. My friends actually threw me a surprise party at the boathouse and it was awesome. I didn't make any videos. I kind of just chilled out and relaxed for the day, but I had a great birthday and thank you guys for all the amazing birthday wishes. I really felt loved. I want to go check out the wait times for the attractions, but I do want to point out that Genie Plus is $25 for today. $25, and I'm not going to be buying it because as of right now, 2 p.m., there are no lightning lanes available. Like, I think there might be a couple for Star Tours and maybe the Frozen Sing-Along, but that's not until like 7, 8 o'clock tonight. Looks like Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is 150 minute wait. Smuggler's Run is 85 minutes. Uh, oh, Rock and Roller Coaster is 125 minutes. Tower of Terror is 125 minutes. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is 105 minutes. Basically, almost everything is over 100 minutes or over an hour. Everything is over an hour, except for Alien Swirling Saucers. That's 50 minutes. I just counted it up and there are five attractions with a hundred plus minute wait time. So that is a very busy day. And there's not many attractions here at the park itself. I don't even, I feel like between Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom, those are probably the two parks with the least amount of attractions. But Hollywood Studios makes it easier because they're so close to each other. And uh, I don't see ourselves getting on a lot of rides. I can spend all day here and not ride anything. I just enjoy being in the parks and especially during the holiday season, but I still wanna to try to ride something at least. Maybe we'll be able to do uh, Toy Story Mania or if I could pick any ride to ride today, like it would be Tower of Terror or Slinky Dog Dash, but I don't wanna wait two hours for it. I think we're just gonna evaluate the situation after we have lunch. It's just about that time to check in at 50's Primetime Cafe, and maybe some of the wait times will go down. Usually, sometimes they will drop down after two o'clock because some people is gonna be park hopping, but we'll just see. Right now, I gotta get myself a chicken pot pie. It's time to head back to the 50s, and this restaurant is such a fun restaurant. I actually wish I brought my mom and sister here. I think they would enjoy it a lot, and they've got like great uh, different entrees. They have Aunt Liz's golden fried chicken, a sampling of mom's favorite recipes where you get some chicken, some pot roast, some meatloaf, all the fixings, and I was interested in trying Grandpa Jean's chicken pot pie like i've never had it before but i really want to get it it sounds i mean like i said it's kind of pot pie weather and also maybe uh some chicken noodle soup wouldn't mind some chicken noodle soup and some pot pie the food itself here is kind of mid. I mean, I'm kind of excited to try the, the chicken pot pie, but like the chicken's good, the meatloaf's okay, uh, but what you're really paying for is the atmosphere. It is truly awesome in there. You do go back to the 50s, and the cast members that are taking care of you interact with you. They yell at you to put your cell phones away and keep your elbows off the table, and if you eat everything, you get a little sticker that says you join the Clean Plate Club, so you get like a clean plate club and I just love it it's a real fun time the restaurant itself is themed like a 50s kitchen and a 50s living room look at this in here it looks so cool and they even have like a family of the day it's the first family that comes in and uh, they get their photo taken and it gets printed out and put on the fridge 
December 21st, 1952. I, I really want to be the family of the day though. I'm just going to show up myself and just be here. The first family of the day, just me. Some of the tables are set up just like this and you get to sit down and watch TV and it's my dream to actually own one of these televisions where it says Disney and then WD here like if I can get anything from like any of the parks I think I would want this I think it would be it, it'd be a life goal to own that but how cool is this let me know if any of this stuff looks familiar like you would see it hanging at your house or your grandma's house <laughs> Now that we are at our table, I decided I am going to go with Grandpa Jean's pot pie. But I just found out they don't have the chicken noodle soup anymore. They have tomato soup. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I think maybe just the pot pie. But I do, I'm going to miss the chicken. You know, like sometimes when you branch out and get some like different items, you're going to miss the ones that you normally get. Gotta eat your vegetables. <laughs> she literally just fed that man his green beans, and I think that is hysterical. I better make sure I eat all my vegetables. I also decided on getting an Arnold Palmer, and it is my responsibility to set the table. I'm gonna set the table for myself. So I'll put this all together. Got my forks and my knives. I don't wanna get yelled at. And there we go. Perfect. Since I'm not getting any appetizers, I might actually get the peanut butter and jelly milkshake, which is a classic here. I'll get it for uh, dessert though, because I don't like drinking milkshakes beforehand. Jingle bells upon request. One, two, three. Jingle, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> and here it is. Grandpa Jean's pot pie. Look at this. They actually just added this back to the menu, and I love it. It's like a little garlic flaky crust on top there. Lots of filling. Oh, I'm 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 kind of happy I got this, and I hope I won't be disappointed because I do want to try that. Uh, I, I I am gonna miss the fried chicken. Here we go. Time to dive in. I'm gonna take a little bit of the crust. Get a little bit of the chicken. Got to get something, a little bit of everything in one bite. It's a little too big of a bite. So I'll take some of that off. Here we go. So good. Wow. Hi, welcome. Use that fancy corner in the back for bags. That's called bag check. My favorite thing about this pot pie is that it's baked in a, a buttery flaky, a buttery bakey, a buttery, a buttery, a buttery, a buttery bakey flaky crust. A, a baked in a buttery flaky crust. Baked in a buttery flaky crust. <laughs> if you guys know, you know. That is one of my all time favorite viral videos and it just cracks me up all the time. But it is so good. Like I love this so much and I like the peas, the chicken. Very good. Definitely going to be a proud member of the Clean Plate Club. It's really fun just sitting here eating food and watching like old Mickey cartoons and also like old 50s sitcoms like Dennis the Menace was on here and uh, a lot of other really cool ones. Run. <gasps> That's excellent. Look at these tongue marks. I don't even have to wash this plate. Why I did good. All the kids do this good? Clean Plate I Club. Oh yeah, you're in the club. You won't even be able to be the president this week. We're looking for a new one. Oh, I, I volunteer as tribute. All right, I'm gonna sign you up. Be right back. Clean plate club. Look at that. You now are the president of the clean clean plate club. So wow. We have to get you settled in. I feel honored. Look at this. Yes. I'm getting a, a, a wow. Oh yeah, you're the president. We gotta get your outfit together. Okay, all right. Sewing uh, isn't my thing. Yeah. So we gotta president. make sure you are now the president of the club. Okay. Great. So hang on. I'm Maybe gonna wear gonna this the rest of the day. Well, I really think you should because everyone's gonna know you ate all your vegetables, and then they will call mom and they'll be like, "Yeah, he was a good boy." <laughs> She'll even let you stay out after dark time, even though you're supposed to be home when the streetlights come on because it's bath night. Perfect. Look at that. 
Sweet. Oh, there you go. Everyone's gonna know who you are all day. Julia. I'll he is wear now it the with pride. <laughs> as you should be. Yeah, as you should. Yeah. There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> the best one of all. I am gonna keep this forever. Look at this. So awesome. Cousin Quinn was probably the best server I have ever had in my life. She was so amazing and it's such a memorable experience. Like I couldn't just stop watching her interact with everybody and I loved it so much. The pot pie was phenomenal. I did miss my friend's uh, fried chicken, but you know, sometimes you gotta mix it up. But can you imagine if they added like the chicken pot pie, like Grandpa Jean's pot pie to the mom sampling? That would be like epic. And I skipped out on the milkshake because I think maybe we'll go somewhere else and get some dessert. There's a lot of cool Christmas themed treats around the Hollywood studios and uh, might as well do something. I want to walk around and wear this all day but I don't want it to get ruined because I really do love it so much. <laughs> so I might buy a bag or I might just go ask for a bag and put it in there for safekeeping. But look at that. President of the Clean Plate Club. I knew I'd be the president of something. I'll just keep wearing it for a little bit. <laughs> I really do love it though. I think it's so cool. And it really just shows like the magic of like Disney parks. Like that is such an amazing interaction. People talk about like going up to meet, you know, their favorite characters and stuff like that. But like, it's so awesome how impactful, like just like some of the cast members at work in the restaurants and inside the stores and how much they can actually improve someone's vacation or make their day. And I love that. Sadly, it looks like things didn't get better. It actually got busier. Rise of the Resistance is at 160 minute wait. Tower of Terror is at 160 minute wait now. Mickey Minis is still at 100. I wonder what Slinky Dog Dash, oh Slinky Dog's at 140. And Smuggler's Run is at 115. So, <laughs> it didn't work in our favor. I still want to walk back to Toy Story Land, just in case maybe the wait times aren't what they actually are. And I would really love to ride Slinky Dog Dash. Woody's got his Christmas scarf on, and also they're showing off a little bit of the construction for Woody's Roundup Barbecue. They actually released a couple of photos on the inside. This is gonna be the new sit-down restaurant in uh, Hollywood Studios. It's gonna be like a barbecue-themed restaurant. And let me know if you guys have seen some of it. It's literally gonna be right here. And I'm excited, I mean, they need another sit-down restaurant here. But I don't know if it's gonna fit like what they need. I feel like they need like a, a maybe upscale restaurant. They only have the brown derby to go off of. I honestly feel like every other park has multiple like upscale sit-down restaurants except for uh, Hollywood Studios. They have the brown derby and I wouldn't consider sci-fi or 50s or Hollywood and Vine or Mama Melrose or Woody's Roundup to be upscale. So like I feel like they need to add one to the you know the list. I mean honestly just think about it like at Animal Kingdom they have Tiffin's and then they also have uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Tusker House. I would consider Tusker House an upscale like, kind of establishment, even though it's character dining, because it's like a little bit different food, you know what I mean? It's definitely a culinary experience. Looks like the standby line is actually coming all the way out onto the bridge here, so that is not a good sign. It says 150 minutes, and I believe it. But I really do want to ride Slinky Dog Dash. It's so much fun, especially with the jingle bells. Oh. The line is so long, they actually sent out the toy uh, soldiers to actually do their drumming uh, to keep people occupied as they wait. Like, they're actually in the queue doing that. I sat there for a minute and I really thought about it. I was like, I want to ride Slinky Dog Dash, but do I want to dedicate three hours to this line right now? Three hours. And uh, I think I'm going to pass. I think I'm going to pass on the three hour wait. What I can do is sneak into Galaxy's Edge and use my single rider hack on Smuggler's Run. And I bet you at this time of the day, like especially using the secret passageway, it might only be a 10 minute wait. I think we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna go see what it's like. 
Smugglers Run along with Rock and Roller Coaster have single rider lines. A lot of people know that, but they don't know that Smugglers Run actually has two separate single rider lines and one of them nobody knows about. I'm gonna take you guys in and show you what I'm talking about, but I'm not too sure how effective it is today, especially because of how busy it is. Like today is an extraordinary, like busy day. And uh, we'll see. I still think it might do us good. Right now, the standby wait is 105 minutes. 105 minute wait. And we're gonna try the single rider line, try our secret passageway, and we'll see what it uh, ends up being, like the long wait or not. But here we go, we're heading in. It is now officially 3.53, 3.53. Once you go in the single rider line, you keep walking until you see a staircase and it's straight on. But right to the left, there's another staircase that a lot of people miss and that actually takes you up to the attraction too. Right here it is, you just keep walking in and you'll see, you'll run into some people up here. Yeah, see this is where the line starts, but if you go back this way and you go up this staircase, fingers crossed, Look at this. <laughs> Bada bing. Two minute wait. Two minute wait. Now, of course, because I did the single rider line and I didn't wait, I walked right on. I'm gonna be the engineer, so I'll be sitting in the back. So if you are looking for that Covenant pilot spot, I would recommend doing the uh, standby line. But look at that, seriously. Looks like I got a nice bunch of recruits. Line up behind the train, an engineer. You we gotta get three coaxium this time. Three. There we go, all right. Repair that spit your flashing buttons. Open my engineer. I'll do it again to help out. Right, pilot? Push the flashing button to take off. Fire uh -oh. to the left. Steady. Steady. Uh-oh. -uh. There you go. Yes! Yes! <laughs> hey! Ah! Evasive <laughs> action! Right! Left! Right! Go! <laughs> Harpoon! Boom! Shoot the cargo free! Ah! Ah! Oh, my friends, that could have been much worse! Steady, steady. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. We got this. Oh, oh. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. One more. We got it. I think we did good. Nice work, team. Nice work. <laughs> I love that ride, and I love being engineer. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love being like teamed up with like a family, and especially that family because they were so fun. They never rode it before, so we were talking about it beforehand, and uh, they were asking what they should do, and I'm like, just press lots of buttons, and then I told the dad, I'm like, just pull down on the lever whenever I say punch it, and I don't think he was realizing it. I think he was just <laughs> too busy trying to focus on steadying it out, but that was so much fun, and I love being like the hype person, you know? I like it. Come on, we got this. Like, come on, we can do it. I think it's awesome. Now I think I'm gonna start making my way down Sunset, try to find a nice little snack. I know that they have a brownie, a Christmas brownie that I told was told that was really good, but I wanna see what else they have. You know, since we didn't get a dessert at 50s, or should I stop at Baseline? I mean, I do love Baseline, but I don't know if they got any good snacks there other than a whole pretzel, but I do love the pretzel here. 
I was traveling to Sunset and then something caught my eye and I think I'm gonna go for it. It's something I haven't had in a, a very long time. I decided on going with a classic funnel cake. They actually have two different types here. They have a strawberry topping with soft serve, and then they got the glimmer and shimmer uh, funnel cake. But they told me they don't have any of these golden cookies, so I'm gonna opt just for the strawberry topping and soft serve vanilla ice cream. And I'm kind of excited for it. I mean, $7.29 for a plain one, and then an extra $1.20 you get ice cream and strawberries. So, made sense to me, but I haven't had a funnel cake in a forever. Holy moly, I truly underestimated what I was getting myself into when I said I wanted a funnel cake. How does this thing only cost $8.29? It is massive. This is big enough for a whole family. Look at this. Look at how thick that is. Oh my lord. I am so shocked right now. This has to be the biggest funnel cake I have ever seen in my life. And I cannot wait to try it. I'm gonna give you my head uh, for comparison without making a mess. It is, it's huge. And we're gonna dive in. Here we go. <laughs> There's definitely a good chance I'm gonna be walking out of here covered in powdered sugar. Look at these strawberries. Look at this. And you can't wait for this. You gotta dive into it as it's crispy and hot. Oh, it is too. Look at this, cause it gets soggy fast. No one's got time for soggy funnel cakes. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. Wow. This is gonna be a miracle if I can finish all this. I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm trying, but this is, this is a lot of funnel cake. Maybe I have to tip over this ice cream. Timber! There we go. I'm gonna, gonna do my best not to get powdered sugar all over myself or to eat the funnel cake because I just dropped it off my, my fork. Also, I recommend taking some of the pieces from the side and then adding some ice cream to it because underneath this ice cream, that's just all sogginess right there. But it's still very good. Like it, the combination of everything floating together is really good. The faster you eat this, the better. So you gotta eat it quick before it gets all soggy, I'm telling you. I hate to say it, but I think I'm calling it a uh, defeat. This was just so much. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I did a good portion of it, but I just can't finish it. That is a lot of funnel cake right there, and I can't save it. It's already pretty much uh, soggy, so. I think I did a good job with the powdered sugar, too. I might have a little bit of, uh, Strawberry in my beard though, but look at that Nothing and I love how these Roosevelt sweaters don't stain like I spilled some of my coffee on me the other day And I just rubbed it off with a napkin and it disappeared. These are so I love them. I'm obsessed Now I feel like I've come up with a very spontaneous decision since it's so busy here at Hollywood Studios And we're not gonna be able to ride any rides unless we wait three hours I think I'm gonna do a little change-up and make our way over to the other studios Universal Studios because I want to see that one last time before the holiday season is over I mean, I'm sure the holiday season carries on into January, but I still want to go see it one more time before Christmas and uh, I think we're gonna just leave now and make our way over there. It's probably gonna be dark by the time we get there, but it's only about 20 minutes from here, so it's not too, you know, not too far of a drive. One last thing before we actually make our way out. We gotta see the little Christmas cavalcade. Look at this! Santa's coming and we got the reindeer too. Got the best seat in the house too. Look at it, it's snooping, it's snooping, <laughs> it's snooping at Hollywood. <laughs> Is it Happy holidays! Merry Christmas! Police Navida! 
I'm not too sure how much I'm gonna film once I get to Universal, but I always like bringing you guys along with me when I go and journey, you know, to other places when I'm out filming. And plus I have my express pass because with Universal, you get your express after 4 p.m. So we're gonna be able to ride some more rides there. And just like that, we have made it to Universal Studios. Look, I like how they have the Christmas colors up here at the Universal Cinemark. That's actually really nice. But where's the Universal sign? It's still MIA. And it definitely looks like it's crazy busy here. Holy moly. The park is still open for another three hours because it closes at 9 p.m. And this is a lot of people actually leaving right now. It's like a sea of people just coming our way. But that makes it even better. So that means the, the parks might not be as crowded. It's kind of fun that we are able to go to both studio parks here in Orlando in one day. Even though MGM Studios opened up first in 1989, uh, Universal opened up in 1990, but Universal was thought of first. Michael Eisner just rushed to MGM Studios just to be able to open up before Universal opened up. But this was the original, you know, studio park. Technically, the thought of it is the original studio park for Orlando. Originally, a lot of Disney's MGM Studios was actually going to be a part of Epcot, which is kind of funny, isn't it? But then when there was talks of uh, Universal opening up a Florida park, they decided to just go all in on their own studio park. I love coming to Universal during the holidays, though, and I haven't been back since I was here with my Maja, and uh, we got to meet uh, the Grinch. It's funny I called her Maja. I'm starting to feel like uh, Austin Powers. Yafaja, Yafaja, oh, father. We've got some Christmas elves out and about. Look at this, Did we? I think I just missed the parade, maybe. Oh no, the parade's usually at like five o'clock, but I do want to go see the Christmas tree, so I think we're gonna head down that way. I'm not even sure what you would call them. Snowflakes, snow angels. Uh, I mean, but they're really fun. And like I said, I want to go down and see the Christmas tree. I'm just in time for the little Christmas lighting show here. This is so fun and festive. Look at it. Woo! Look at that. This is definitely the girdiest tree out of all the theme parks, I have to say. She's a beaut, Clark. In good tradition, first stop probably would have to be Finnegan's to get myself maybe a harp or an old fashioned. And then I want to make my way down to E.T. I love it in here. And I love the live music too. Very fun. It's always a good time in Finnegan's. People are enjoying themselves, dancing, getting up on stage, singing Christmas music, and I uh, decided on a little harp. A little harp and now some E.T. Look at all these Christmas decorations though. I love this. And also I hear the little uh, street sweeper coming by because they usually shoot off tons of confetti and Snoke whenever the parade comes by, so then they have like this little machine that kind of cleans it all up, like a big vacuum. Well, there it is. Look at that. Doing its job. This is all the stuff that I was telling you. This is, so they shoot this off uh, on the parade and that big vacuum kind of uh, sucks it all up. E.T. is one of my all-time favorite rides, but I do have to say that I kind of was smelling different smells in there, like different smells from what I'm used to smelling, of course, the bromine, but uh, I was picking up some HHN vibes and also some Pandora vibes. It was very confusing to me. Like, I was very shocked. Ooh, we just caught the tail end of the uh, cinematic spectacular here. It's so pretty actually walking through here too. All the lights and everything. Park is closed on this side. I think I'm gonna try to make our way over to Islands of Adventure though. 
And with that, I think we are done here today. I didn't film much here at Universal Studios, only because, I mean, you can't film on the rides, but I had a lot of fun. We ended up going and riding E.T., I did Jurassic Park, I did uh, Spider-Man, Kong, and it was great. Like, we got a lot done in just a little bit of time. Got to see the holidays a little bit before uh, Christmas time. And I'm excited. I'm gonna try to do a couple more videos before Christmas. Maybe hit up Magic Kingdom. I wish I was able to go home and see my mom and sister, but with the move and adjusting with Gracie, I don't wanna leave her. I don't wanna make her feel like alone. So I think I'm just gonna stay and maybe plan a big trip for January or February for my mom and sister. And I think they would appreciate that too. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.